If you're interested in starting intermittent fasting and want to know how to do intermittent fasting correctly, this video is going to show you a proper way of doing it. It's going to give you everything you need to know to get started with intermittent fasting. It is really easy to get started and there's nothing too complicated. It's pretty straightforward. By the way, if you're new to my channel, I'm a nutritionist and a health coach who is all about providing you with the best science-based health and weight loss advice. So if you're interested in staying healthy and fit, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so that you'll get notified whenever I release new videos. So what is intermittent fasting? Intermittent fasting is a meal timing plan where you have eating and non-eating times. During your eating period, you eat as normal and during your non-eating period or fasting period, you don't consume any calories. And are you supposed to reduce your caloric intake while fasting? Well, not necessarily. You could have the same amount of calories as you would if you would spread these two larger meals into six smaller meals and still get the benefits. Because the benefits come from the amount of time you spend without food. Not eating affects your physiology in a way that creates various health benefits. So how long are you supposed to fast? Well, this depends on your goals and your capabilities. So first, let's look at what do I mean by your fasting goals. The longer the fast, the more benefits you get, but it takes time and practice until you can comfortably do longer fasts. But even the 16 hour fast, it is really beneficial. You give your body a chance to rest, stop digesting the food for a while. Your body can finally focus on some other tasks that it normally doesn't have time for. At this point, at 16 hours without food, you deplete your glucose stores and tap into fat burning. You start using your own body fat for energy and it can help you to lose excess weight while preserving your lean muscle mass at the same time. Doing this regularly can help you to stay healthy and fit. In addition, you get increased mental clarity. You get even more benefits with longer fasts. You increase fat burning even further. Your body becomes very efficient at burning your own body fat. And your body goes into the healing and regeneration process called autophagy. Autophagy is the body's way of cleaning out damaged cells in order to regenerate newer, healthier cells. Auto means self and phagy means eat. So the term autophagy means self-eating. It's like your body is doing some renovation, getting rid of the old damaged stuff and replacing it by new. And you usually start autophagy after 18 to 20 hours of fasting, with maximum benefits occurring after 48 to 72 hours of fasting. That's a long time without food, but if you're sick, or if you have some serious health issues, that's probably the most powerful thing you can do to heal. And even if you are healthy, regular fasting can help you to stay young and healthy for a much longer time, and it can even make you live longer. So that's definitely something to consider. So will you starve till death if you don't eat for 24 hours? Well, definitely no. An average 70 kilogram or 154 pound male could survive one to three months without food simply drinking water and not getting in any calories. So is fasting natural for humans or is it some sort of fad? From an evolutionary perspective, humans would typically go days without food, often hunting on an empty stomach. Semi-starved animals with enhanced brain function and energy would be more likely to obtain food and find ways to survive. It's just how we evolved, eating only when the food is present, maybe once a day, or maybe once in two days or in three days. It is not natural for us to have six small meals a day. This is a real fad that is actually making us fat and sick. Is it unhealthy to skip breakfast, which is basically the same as doing intermittent fasting? That's what the food industry wants you to believe in. If from all of a sudden everyone stopped eating breakfast, they would lose millions, if not billions. So they will keep funding nutrition research and uh, determining the outcomes, influencing our dietary guidelines, training nutritionists and dietitians to push this idea that breakfast is the most important meal of the day and that fasting is unhealthy. And there are several different types of fasting. Depending on the situation and your goals, you can choose which method you want to use. So the first one is the simple intermittent fasting. An example would be 16 and 8. 
meaning you fast for 16 hours and your eating window is 8 hours. So let's say you would have your dinner at 8 p.m., then wouldn't eat anything after. You would wake up in the morning and skip breakfast and would have your first meal at 12 p.m. You could carry on and do this every day if you want, having two large meals a day and no snacks. But if you feel too hungry and you can't do it regularly yet, just do what you can. Over time, you will feel more comfortable with it and you could increase your fasting time and do 18-6, meaning you don't eat for 18 hours, or 20-4, and 4, meaning you don't eat for 20 hours. And this would help you to activate that autophagy. But it's easier to start with 16-hour fast and even a bit less, 14-hour fast, and increase it over time. It might take several months until you feel comfortable with regular 18 or more hour fasts. And you could do this type of intermittent fasting once, twice, or even seven times a week. Then the next type of fasting is prolonged fasting, which basically means fasting for 24 to 48 hours. This is more focused on cellular rejuvenation called autophagy. It helps you to repair the damage, heal your body, and helps you to recover from various diseases. So if you have cancer, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, dementia, definitely consider regular prolonged fasts of at least 24 hours. And you could do prolonged fasts once a month or at least once or twice a year. One more thing to mention here, if you are a type 2 diabetic and you are told that fasting is bad for you, you should check out this study. It's a systematic review and meta-analysis of randomized control trials looking at the effectiveness of intermittent fasting to reduce body mass index and improve glucose metabolism. The study found that intermittent fasting may provide a significant metabolic benefit by improving the glycemic control, insulin resistance, and adipokine concentration with a reduction of BMI in adults. So intermittent fasting is actually great for diabetics. What can you eat or drink during a fast? During intermittent fasting or prolonged fasting, you are only allowed to consume some drinks that have no calories and they have to not interfere with your insulin. You can still drink water and sweeten tea or black coffee. Black coffee has been shown to increase the autophagy and fat burning effects while fasting, so it's a good idea to have some black coffee while you fast. And of course, no food. Not even a teaspoon of food. No food at all. No carbohydrates, fat, protein, or alcohol, as this would ruin your fast. Then the next type is a liquid fast. So as you can see from the name, you are still allowed to consume liquids. And here you have a bit more flexibility with your drinks. So you're still allowed to consume coffee. You're also allowed to consume coffee with a dash of cream. Bulletproof keto coffee, which is basically a coffee with butter and coconut oil. It's great to have these type of coffees because they give you a lot of energy and help you to go longer periods of time without solid foods. It also has minimal insulin response, as fats affect your blood glucose and insulin the least. Then you can also have some bone broth. Bone broth is made by boiling down animal bones and connective tissue. And you can make it yourself if you want, but it takes around 12 to 24 hours, or you can order it on Amazon, already made for you. I will leave the link down below where you can go and order a high quality bone broth. Bone broth is rich in various minerals, vitamins, amino acids, and essential fatty acids. It increases the healing process. These drinks have calories, but they are all in liquid form and all have some great health benefits. And the last type of fasting is dry fasting. This is quite extreme. You don't eat and drink anything. This type of fasting is extremely beneficial for fat loss. So as you don't consume any water, your body will start making its own water. And to do it, it will start pulling out hydrogen from your fat stores. It will take that hydrogen and make molecular water. And you could do dry fasting for 24 hours once or twice a year if your main goal is fat loss. Then there's another important thing to mention. There's a slight difference between men and women when it comes to fasting. Women tend to feel way hungrier and might find it quite difficult to fast. That's because women have a way more complex reproductive system and fasting may feel like a bigger threat to their bodies, causing the hunger signals to be stronger. So if you are a woman and you struggle with fasting, you can start slow. 
Start with 14 or 16 hour fasts or start with a liquid fast as it makes it a lot easier. When should you exercise? If you want to work out while fasted, pick a time in the middle of your fast because you might be quite weak at the end of your fast. So if your main goal is weight loss, exercising while fasted will help you to burn fat faster. It's not a must, but if you feel like exercising, go for it. Now let's look at how to break a fast. Normally, your gut gets weaker temporarily after fasting, so it would be best to break a fast with something like bone broth. Bone broth helps you to restore your gut's mucosal layer faster. And then you could wait 10 to 30 minutes and have your first meal. And make sure this meal is healthy. Don't go for McDonald's after your fast. Your meal should consist of non-starchy veggies, healthy protein, and fat. You could have some broccoli and cauliflower baked in the oven with butter, together with a serving of wild salmon or grass-fed organic meat or organic free-range eggs, and have a smoothie or a salad with it. Make it really healthy. So when do you stop a fast? Well, when you feel like. You can plan to do a 24-hour fast, but let's say you started feeling horrible. At 18 hours, you feel really hungry, you have a stomach ache, you have a headache, you don't feel well. Just go and eat. But don't break your fast when you feel slight hunger. You will be more hungry around times when you normally have your meals. Break it when you feel really hungry. For example, when you wake up in the morning, you get a natural spike in the stress hormone cortisol, and it will cause slight hunger when you wake up. But if you wait a bit, it will go away. It's not a real hunger. And how do you start fasting in general? What helps you to get started? Well, fixing your diet is really important. If you eat a lot of refined carbohydrates and processed food, there's a high chance that you have insulin resistance, excess weight, and you're always hungry. It's just how these foods affect your body. If you're used to having six smaller meals a day, it might be difficult at first to switch to one, two, or three meals a day. So first, you have to get rid of the foods that make you hungry all the time. So you have to reduce your sugar intake, reduce other refined carbohydrates as well, then deep fried foods, processed snacks, refined vegetable oils. You have to reduce these as much as possible or remove them altogether and replace them by natural whole foods. And when you switch to eating natural whole foods, have enough of high fiber, non-starchy vegetables, such as broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, or spinach. Have enough of high quality protein, which is around 100 grams or 3.5 ounces of meat or fish with your lunch and dinner. And have enough of healthy fat, such as grass-fed butter, ghee, organic extra virgin coconut oil, extra virgin olive oil, nuts, seeds, avocados, or olives. You can start feeling way more satiated and can go longer periods of time without eating. And if you want to learn more about healthy eating, you should check out some of my other videos where I explain it in detail. So this was my detailed intermittent fasting guide, where I shared how to do intermittent fasting correctly. If you found this video useful, like it, share it with your friends and family. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments. Subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell so that you would get notified whenever I release new videos such as this one. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.